All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Scar Navarro. I am the drama king, where life is drama, drama is life. And today I'm going to talk about the long-awaited Vencer el Desamor final thoughts. It has been more than a month, almost two, since Vencer el Desamor ended. And I have to say this, though. It's really a telenovela that's going to carry with me for a long time. And I really did enjoy the telenovela overall. Even though there were flaws here and there, especially through the final episodes, but I will admit it though, it really opened my eyes a lot more, but also taught me to appreciate more of who I am as a person. And especially being a person with disabilities, especially um, especially the, um, the drama, especially the drama involving what many people, especially those who are young, those who are around my age, and those who are older face, especially when we all have, um, our especially the neurodiverse community. And I have to say this though, Vincere de Samor is definitely a telenovela that's going to carry with me for a long time. And also today is Mother's Day, um, especially for those, for those, for my ras, for the raza who, um, who love and appreciate their moms. It is their day and it is celebrated in Mexico and Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, and just all of Latin America. And especially here though, in the United States where we all learn to love and appreciate our mothers. And I'm going to give you guys my final score of Vincera this morning. It's going to be a 9.5. I know it's going to, I know it sounds a little... I know it looks a little odd, but I have to admit this though, it was one of my favorite telenovelas from last year slash this year that helped me get through a lot. Especially in, during the time of the pandemic. Um, overall though, um, the reason why I gave a 9.5 though is that I felt like even though there's certain things that could have improved, overall though, I have to say, this telenovela is definitely one of the most meaningful telenovelas I've seen so far. And I have to say, though, even though I've had my doubts, especially with casting, though, but with good direction and with really good acting, I ended up enjoying it overall. And I'm going to talk about the, um, why I really enjoyed the cinema. And I remember I did a video a few months back around talking about the top 10 reasons why you should watch Vincent and Samor. And if you haven't seen it, though, please check it out. It is highly appreciated. And overall though. And overall though. It's definitely something that you will enjoy. And what is Vencer el Desamor? Vencer el Desamor. Is the second of three telenovelas. One early last year. Which is Vencer el Medio. Which I talked about in my. In my early videos a year ago. When lockdown began. And then I. And then. Vincere del Samor, which is the second part, and which was aired between at the end of last year and this year. And this year, they're going to air Vencere el Pasado, which is going to start Angelique Boyer, Sebastián Rulli, Erika Buenfin, and a, and, and a really popular, well-known cast. And it is, all three are produced by Rocio Campo. Who you have known from her productions such as La Fea Más Bella. And even even more significant productions such as La Fuerza del Destino, Mentir para Vivir, Que Pobres Son Ricos, Antes Muerta Que Lichita, La Doble Vida de Estela Carrillo. And over and, and Vencer el Miedo, Vencer el Desamor, and the soon to be released, Vencer el Pasado. And I have to say this though, overall, it is... Definitely, I feel like I it's going to do well. And I really hope it does do well in the third and final part. Um, And even though, like, my expectations, like, I'm going to keep it a little more, are much higher from when I first heard of Encer el Samor. But I have to say this, though. I'm really glad it changed my mind. And I really got to got to enjoy it a lot. And I think overall, though, this is a really great telenovela. 
All right, enough of repeating myself. What did I think about the performances? Overall, though, starting with Daniela Romo. I have to say this, though. After so many productions was... After so many not-so-good productions in the past, then I'm really glad that she is in a really great production. And I feel like her character is very memorable. And yeah, it kind of reminds me of my mother and many of her moms, especially growing up. And even with the ideologies and even with the machismo that still out there but I have to say that though she made us share with her character Barbara she made us laugh she made us cry and sometimes we're you just want to just you're irritated with how much she turns her blinders on with her son with her other son not Alvaro but but the other son but which um let me see let me see let me see let me see Let me see, with the other son, which is played by Juan Diego Covarrubias. And let me make sure I am in the right spot. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Eduardo. And I have to say this, though. Though, like, I really do enjoy her acting. She definitely, I feel like she needed a role that was so significant after seeing her in productions that that I felt like she didn't need to be in. If you guys seen what I seen. El El La Tempestad in Tierra Salvaje. And Triunfo del Amor. Finally, I'm so happy that she's in a production that is super significant. And I really would have I really feel like we should see her again in el Pasado by her. She's not gonna be in it. But I have to say that though she, it, she's very relatable, her character really relates to a lot of our what our moms are, especially Mexican moms, especially Guatemalan moms, and especially those who still hold conservative beliefs. And I really have to say this though, like she definitely she definitely did a wonderful job here, and it is very memorable. David Cepeda. Um, I have to say this. I was really surprised though, and I'm really glad he's in a he did a really good job here. And even though with the production, it's like Bona Marcine, which I didn't think he did a good job. I didn't but with the Vincerdo, I'm really glad that he was able to take a role that's very different from what we usually see and get to see a man who is so like who you feel really bad for, who has problems with producing with wanting to have kids and even just want to have a family and went through the worst periods and was able to get back up and I really have to say though this though he really has really good chemistry with Claudia Alvarez but I like the chemistry more than he had with Altai Tarabo um even though they've worked together in the past but I have to say this though, like, I really am glad he was he took this role, and I really got to enjoy it though, and he will be on Vencer el Pasado, if anybody knows, if anybody is interested. Claudia Alvarez. Claudia Alvarez is, I'm gonna be honest, it was not my cup of tea, tea especially after watching Simplemente Maria, which I thought it was just cringy in many ways. But in here, like, I was surprised, like, I'm really glad that she was able to do the role very well. Especially having a son who is, who is dealing with Asperger's and, and just, like, having to deal with Eduardo who abandoned them and married someone else and did everything illegally. And just the fact that she was just sabotaged and went through so much, but was able to regain her profession as a journalist, especially in regards to 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 the attacks women go through, feminist side, and so many things that are still existing today. But I have to say this: so like, I really like. I feel like many many of many women who are single moms or just those who are getting back in the in their career in getting back to having a career 
and especially realizing that they could do it, I really am glad that it, that she took this role and was able to surprise all of us. Julia Urbini. I have to say she's a marvelous actress and and she really um resonated with me and there's times I'm like or I did not I couldn't stand her character, but her portrayal was really good. Especially dealing with her the harassment she faced from her stepdad. And especially being a widow, being a single mom of two kids, and even juggling a, a job, especially being a translator, and even meeting a new man in her life, which is Gael. And I have to say this though, it's like she really did a really good job. And especially in the last scene where Nino was about to do all to like get revenge on all of them and the fact that like she was able like to attack him back especially with what she went through like wow like i have to say she's marvelous in every scene here and valentina buzuro i have to say though she really is the light the heart and soul of this telenovela Along with Daniela Romo, like, I really enjoyed their scenes together. Especially discovering that she's pregnant. Especially after being sold to a man who... Who treated her like crap and... Going through a lot and even living with her aunt. Even living with her aunt, going to school. And even... Even having to juggle... Between between her pregnancy and planning a better future for herself it is like one it is a really wonderful portrayal and she will be in Vencer del Pasado if anybody know wants to ask and she really did really resonate with me all of them did all of them did though but it's also a reflection of our society in general and also realizes that we still have a lot to work on and Emmanuel Palomares. Emmanuel Palomares, I really like him. Like, he's really good in his role. And especially playing the twins, um, Gael and Romel from Vencer el Miedo. I have to say this though, like, he definitely goes through a lot. Especially discovering that he has a twin brother and having, and was forced to take his, and was had to take his place in jail and so on. And even being betrayed by a, by, by a friend and... I have to say this, this though, like he really did a one. He did a really good job here, and his chemistry with Julia Urbini was really good, especially being torn between between Romina and Daphne. Like it's a really interesting role here, but also realizing about the truth. But at the end, though, he was able to pull through and understand many things. Understand. Many th understand it overall. And Juan Diego Covar Rubias. I have to say this though. I'm really glad he's back on screen. And he really was so detestable. As this brat. And this. Piece of crap of a father. Without saying the, <laughs> the least here. But. Not only do you hate him. But he really. It's probably one of his best works. I've seen him in a long time. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad he took this role. And for the rest of the cast, though, I really have to say this, though. Like, when they brought in Marco Trevino to replace Leonardo Daniel, who was dealing with COVID at the time. I have to say this, Marco Trevino did a marvelous job. And, oh my god, even though his wardrobe was, like, grew um, from Despicable Me, but his character is so detestable. But then, it kind of reflects... On, on even murder, on even people who, who are charming but have really, really dark intentions. If you guys get what I mean, but because of YouTube policies, you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from. But, and at the end, where he was getting revenge, and after like taking a piece of jewelry from each of the women, 
he victim he used as victims, whether it was taking their lives, it was like, I couldn't believe it. But then you could see this on any show or even on the news where where they talk about where where you see like someone who took the life of a woman and it's really sad that in society like there's still so much persecution there's still so much cases of femicides but yet I like that I was able to reflect that and another actor that I really enjoyed though overall though has to be the um the friend of has to be the friend of Ariadna and she, I really like their I really love how they click and they go through so much and even investigating about Lino Ferrer and Som and even listening to stories of the victims I really like how they these two ladies clicked and it really really it's really fun watching I really enjoy their scenes a lot but the chill the child cast it's really enjoyable like Especially the young actor who played Ariadna's, Ariadna and Eduardo's son. His name is Iker Garcia. Especially playing a kid who has Asperger's. It kind of relates to what all of all of us, especially those in the neurodiverse community, we went through when we were younger, and how our and even our moms trying our best, trying their best, to, their efforts to make sure. That we at least know that we have support. But at the end of the episode. It kind of gave a very realistic message though. Like, and it even so resonates with me. Especially as I'm, as I'm about to be 30. Some, in the next year. Um, is that it's going to happen from time to time. Like we can't control everything. But we have to learn to accept it. But also find ways to realize that like certain behaviors are going to happen even though things are going to process here and there but but it's going to take its own time if you guys kind of understand what I mean here and oh but overall though um it, he but overall though, this child did a really good job in understanding the role and even just the way how he clicks with his uncle Alvaro, who, especially when I when watching um, Alvaro, like especially when I watched what he went through, it kind of reminds me of my brother in a little in a sense, like especially how especially in Raza in Raza families, how they treat the eldest child. You kind of understand, especially if you've seen that in other dramas and novelas such as All as well, which kind of except except the oldest is the daughter. I kind of see a huge reflection on what I seen in Vincere del Samor. And also, I think the rest of the supporting cast, though, I believe the rest did pretty well. And even though there are two, even though like there are characters from the first one, such as Doña Efi, from, and even uh, Huicho Dominguez, but overall, and even some of the characters from from the first season, they are there. And also played a really important role here. And they all did a really good job here. And I really enjoy, I really um, am appreciative that they were able to join. They were able to be a part of, part of the sec, part of the sequel, part of, part of the sequel. And in the last episode, we see Paulina Goto, um, especially when she... Especially when they were doing a march, though it was really, it was really a fun scene. Especially when all of them are united, though, um, it's really, it's really enjoyable. But also, um, another actress that I really liked though was Altair Harabo, and her character was very complex. Like sometimes, like you understood her, and other times I'm like, get over it. But I have to say this though, like she did the best, and I really, we, we really need to see her in a leading role. What's wrong with producers or in many other platforms such as Netflix? Um, but but I really enjoyed 
their presence in Vencer del Estambul. And I was really sad that, that she was tragically killed by the evil Lino, even though they couldn't show that scene, but they couldn't, they, even though that scene was, even though, like, we've seen, like, what happened, what, what was happening, but it wasn't, like, in graphic detail because of the, uh, because of the situation, though, and especially with what's, hap what's happening now, but, but it also kind of relates to our society overall, though, and overall, even though, like, the, there were some dark moments there, but the lighting was really, like, it also, but was it, but I like that I was able to match the balance out, balance out, like, between, like, having, like, really sweet scenes, especially with the kids, especially with, especially with the kid, especially, um, with Hema, and even some of the scenes with the, with Lino, and I liked how it balanced out. Even though, like, even though with Imperio, even though with Imperio, the Imperio de Mentira was just super dark. But in here, though, like, even though, like, the story could be, like, could be intense. But there's, at least they put in tender moments. But, but, but the way it is done, it's, like, balancing it out so that we, like, we can have it all. Especially those who enjoy, like, the intense moments, but also that we enjoy the sweet moments as well. But I really did. I really did like that about Vincent and some more. And and also though, it kind of gave me a lot of these and the top five lessons that I've learned overall when I saw Vincent and some more is to also like never let anyone tell you, you can't do it, especially when Barbara when we first saw the first episode. Like Barbara wanted to go on a trip to Paris, but couldn't but as a then as a character slow as a as a character went on this journey as Barbara went on the journey with uh, all of us like slowly like she was able to like uh, understand the importance of, of wanting to be on your own and even the importance of becoming independent but also like goes with all of them Ariadna, Hema, Daphne and it's also very important to understand that women deserve to be treated equally. That every woman has a right to enjoy their lives, enjoy their sexuality, enjoy the right to travel, enjoy the right to do whatever they want. And it is really important that our society and that we need to switch up that, that mentality that has been affecting us. As for many generations. But I really do admit though. I really do admit though. Like it really also made us appreciate women even more. But also the importance of understanding that we also have to appreciate ourselves. And not let anyone. Regardless of who you are or what you or where you are in life. Tell you you can't do it when you can do it. Another lesson that I got from Vincent and Smart is to believe in yourself. Even when moments are tough though, there are times that things are going to happen here and there. But you can't give up. You have to learn to keep going forward. Especially with what happened with Alvaro. Especially with what Ariadna went through. And what Gael went through. Like Things are going to happen but one has to learn to to realize that it's important to move forward and realize that as much as we could be upset or mad, we can't let it get through us. We have to also realize that we can do it. And that even though things even though we could lose hope, we could lose faith. But overall though, it is important that we um that we always try to move forward and build strength day by day even if moments are tough though we have to also realize that we can all do it another thing that I that I've learned though is that within the neurodiverse community we all need to support one another and especially um especially when we all have our conditions and things that we go through 
it is important to also make sure that we educate and I really apologize for the background noise um, and also um, I really have to um, admit though that it is a really that it's really important for parents to also not be afraid to ask questions and understand the conditions that your kid is in especially if they have aut um, a learning disability especially if they are if they they have autism down syndrome Asperger's or any or cerebral palsy that's okay to ask ask questions it's okay to ask to have support but it's important to always love your child no matter what and no matter what happens another lesson that I um, also learned though from Vincere del Zamora is to is that all of us have all of us have a purpose in life especially within the telenovela though I have to admit though it really brought in a new it really brought something that I really enjoyed and even though things just like I repeated earlier things are going to happen here and there though but it's important to always believe and trust yourself and trust your instincts but it's also important to love yourself in the process and open your heart to love others as well and even though there's going to be disappointments in life but one cannot allow one cannot allow so one cannot allow any abuse or anything or any mistreatment from anybody and this was and this is important though to love yourself the way you are and also another and also another lesson that I also got from Vincent is that in 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 the in in the midst of darkness there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and I really like the lesson though because it also realizes that even though like we are we go through so much in life that there's always a solution that even though there are a million problems everything can be solved but it takes time and it takes process and overall though it's really something I feel like we've all experienced and that especially when we saw Vincere de Samor though I really feel like it's something that we all learn and we all grow from and also though um even though there's even though like we are you know like so much is and is and still is happening i believe in Serena of more though like really helped a lot of people really really was a good telenovela that not only entertained but at least provided good lessons for all of us to learn and it's also important to open our minds and open our hearts and realize that like that we all that in order to break out of our shells that we all have to start l listening to other people have a conversation but also explore the world and explore its beauty and also like understand the realities and understand what is happening and what we can do to make to learn and educate but also make it better and also um and and I'm also going to go into final details though like especially in the um I'm going to go through the, some of the flaws I think in the final episode some of the situation especially the way things were solved were a bit rushed to me even though I would have liked to have another week to at least like have things solved here and there though but I really feel like with the with the good acting with good acting though and even though like even though there were minor faults in the end though but but I do appreciate that everything was able to resolve in a, in a good amount of time especially with Lino especially with with how he took the lives of victims especially with in the fact that Alvaro sacrificed his life especially Ariadna rescuing him and having to go through that which kind of is a bit similar to if you've seen the final episode of Vencer el Miedo you kind of see that in Vencer el Desamor and I have to admit this so this was like even though it feels similar but 
the situation is different, but also affects with what is happening today and what's hap been affecting and what and what is and why it's so affecting us today. But um, sorry for um, repeating being a little repetitive here, but but I also um, am very appreciative that at the end things were able to be solved, and I know that. Um, Ariadna and Gemma are going to be in Venceri Pasado along with Álvaro. And I do wish, hopefully, that things do continue in Venceri Pasado. And also, um, it's really, a, it's, but in spite of that, though, I really did enjoy the telenovela. And the theme song fits perfectly. And it definitely reflects the telenovela and also the journeys that we go through. And I'm really glad that Daniela sung the song sung it, sung the song herself. And and we tend to forget that she's also a very famous singer as well. And I'm really glad that she was able to sing the song for Vincere de Samor, but also be in the telenovela and be but and also um and also embody Barbara and overall though like it's really a wonderful telenovela and my thoughts on Vencerle Pasado though like I really like I really do hope things do go well especially when now you have four new actresses that even like well known such as Angelique Poyer, Erika Buenfil and Aranza Ruiz who and also Ana Paula Martinez and I really do hope the best for Vencerle Pasado, even though it has Sebastián Rudy, Ferdinand Valencia, and and a very well known cast. And I really do have to admit though, I really um even though like I have a little bit of doubt though, um, but I really do hope that it's also just as good as Vencerle Pasado, I mean Vencerle de Amor and Vencerle Miedo. But I have to admit this, so this was a telenovela that like when I hear some of the names though. I wouldn't expect it to be good, but when the but when you watch it though, like you're really in and you're really surprised in a really good way. And I have to say, Vencerle pa is Vencerle de Amor. It's a really good production, and you you will learn a lot from this. And it's important though to not let anyone tell you what to do, and it is important to be in charge of your destiny, be in charge of your fate. And be in charge of your own life. No matter who you are or where you are. You are entitled to do what you want to do in life. And no, let nobody tell you what to do. So otherwise, be independent. Be you. And be happy. Alright everyone. If anybody. and Alright I know this was, this was a very long one. But I really do enjoy this novela. And if you have not seen Vencerle de Samor, what are you waiting for? All right. If you have any thoughts, comments, or concerns regarding Vencerle de Samor, final thoughts, please comment down below. Like and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can also comment down below. And like and subscribe. And I'll, and I'll see everyone in the next video. Have a wonderful night. And Feliz Dia de las Madres en este, en este día. And sending much love to India. And my support to Palestine. Alright, have a wonderful night. Take good care of yourselves. And still wear a mask. Make sure to wash your hands. And get vaccinated if you can. If you have any doubts or questions, it's okay to call your healthcare provider. And if, and, and also, um, we also have to be, we also need to stand with our trans brothers and sisters. And... We all need to treat each other with love and respect. All right, everyone. Good night and sweet dreams and have a wonderful day tomorrow. As tomorrow will be a new day. All right, take care, everyone.